Welcome, and uh, it's nice to finally be here in London after a couple of failed attempts, but we're here now, and I remember last time I was here about 20 years ago, I uh, came here because my brother used to work out of Canada Waters, which is another section of London, and I remember when I was here 20 years ago, there was a magician by the name of David Blaine, and he did this 44-day fast, and he was trapped inside this glass box suspended in air, and I'm sure he got lots of money doing that, but um, I remember that. And it was, um, I think he was trying to fast for four, four days with just water. And some people were thinking he maybe had some vitamins stuck in his water or something. But anyways, uh, thankfully, um, I'm not stuck in a box, although this is kind of intimidating as well. So <laughs> I don't know if uh, it's better to be suspended in air or suspended here. But thank you for sticking around and attending my session. My name is William Yu, and uh, I'll, be, I'll be your tour guide for the next little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, before we take a tour of the Zam Islands, uh, we should probably begin with a brief lesson on how we got here. And, you know, that's a loaded question. I'm not here to answer the mysteries of life. Um, but I think understanding has to start somewhere. So let's, uh, let's start where I think something that we can mostly agree on, and that is the statement. Um, I'm sure as a kid, you play with Legos, you, you built stuff. Um, and as a kid, we enjoy creating stuff, innovating, making things better. And so just as humans, this is kind of how we got here. Um, and as a simple example, we've taken this grass or weed, we've cultivated it, and now we have this delicious corn. And in another example, I'm sure back in the day, it might date us, but um, we are introduced to the rotor phone. And this, I was introduced as a kid, and later on came cell phones although it didn't quite look like this now, or didn't, does not look like this now, but back then, this is what cell phones looked like. And all of a sudden came this man, as we know as Steve Jobs, who introduced us to the iPad, or iPod, I'm sorry, and later he combined these technologies to what we know today now as the iPhone. Also back then, we had computers, but no UI or very limited UI. Along came this man, Bill Gates, and he introduced us to Windows. And as I mentioned before, as humans, we like creating things. So I think when people saw the opportunity to create things with Windows, uh, this is how we got started. And so uh, let's talk about Windows, because this is what the basis of our session is about with the XAML Islands. Um, so Windows, begin with, had a bunch of, I would say, more simplistic APIs and simplistic technologies. And so uh, we started with the Win32 API, which had Win32 controls. Um, some of the program languages they introduced were Visual Basic. They had Visual C++, later Visual Studio. And you would use some of these MFC, which were just classes that wrap Win32 and you would build your app that way. And of course, for graphics, they introduced the GDI API, and things were, things were simple. As I would like to sit in the chair, sipping my Kool-Aid while programming. It was, it was simple, simple back then. But now, <laughs> it's not so simple. <laughs> These days, uh, Windows has introduced a lot of things, a lot of technology. Some have stuck around. Some have been killed off, some have died, uh, some have uh, been improved upon, and some have also been de-emphasized or uh, rebranded sometimes, as you would say. And so we got all these new technologies out there on Windows, and for a developer, that's very daunting, very daunting. And as a developer, I think we have three scenarios uh, when we're presented with all this technology. So scenario one. 
I think people sometimes look at new technology and they don't want to jump in right away. They don't adapt and they are often just left in the dust. Scenario two, there are people that like, to, like new technology and they want to follow the leader and unfortunately sometimes you follow and the leader trips, falls and you get pulled down. And so uh, that's another scenario that could happen. And the final scenario is you're in the middle. Let's say you see tech, new technology, but you don't want to jump in right away because you're not sure uh, if it's, it's good or bad. And so you kind of let the dust settle. And then at the end of uh, the dust settling, maybe you start choosing. And this is kind of where we are. Um, there's so many new technology that Windows introduces, and we're kind of letting dust settle. And we're at the point where we've let the dust settle, and out comes Zao Islands. And this is what we are now using for our um, transition to WinUI. So this new technology, if you don't know what Zao Islands is, uh, it pretty much helps bridge the old technology with the newer technology. I know we started with the uh, Win32 API and Win32 controls with these languages over here. And we use these technologies to build our apps. And then COM was a very essential component um, that is kind of like the underlying technology for all this. And even for WinUI, it's, it's very important. And so XAML Islands will help us to be able to bridge this uh, divide from the old with the new. So where are we in this whole transition? So we're making incremental steps first. Uh, we know as we make this transition, uh, we want old apps to just work. We don't want to break anything. We don't want any new requirements, no new WinUI controls for old apps. Uh, they just work as before. Now for new apps that want to take advantage of WinUI, um, also they should just work, but there are going to be new requirements. And those new requirements are now Windows 11 or Windows 10 build 18.04. And this is because Zalmo Islands was introduced late in October of 2018, which uh, coincided with Windows 10 uh, build 18.09. So what are we introducing? As you saw in Jeff's slide, we are going to introduce to you the desktop Zalmo container and we're hopeful to get this into R2. Now, if any of you have developed with the Windows IDE, and you might be familiar with the desktop only container, it's gonna work a lot like this. Uh, but instead of being able to embed ActiveX controls in your OLED container, what the desktop XAML container will allow you to do is embed XAML content, and we'll show you exactly how that's done. The first, you might be curious, what is XAML? If you ever worked with XML, with uh, HD, uh, yeah, HTML, CSS, uh, all those uh, design patterns are kind of what you work with in XAML. It's a markup language um, where you describe the GUI interface. And so here's a quick little example of XAML. It's a very simple example. I'm creating a button with content. And content is just the label of the button. So one thing to know about XAML, you might see this when you look at code on the web. If you look for XAML code for other languages, they might include some namespaces. And these namespaces just describe what is supported in your XAML. And we've kind of hidden away these uh, default namespaces because they will always exist on every XAML control that you create. So we don't want you to have to type all of these different namespaces in your XAML code. So we've abstracted that away. Um, the last two namespaces are interesting because these are 
uh, newer controls to XAML islands, and so they have different namespaces. And I'll show you as we do our demos how to access those controls. All right, so to begin with, when we started this transition, we looked at XAML islands and what it offered. And to begin with, this is what we found. We can embed UWP controls, which are the flat looking UI that you see there. It looks a lot different from the Win32 controls on the left. And so we didn't quite know if our users would appreciate that kind of look. And that's probably why a lot of Windows users or developers decide not to migrate to UWP because they also did not like that look and feel. Thankfully, as we continued our research into XAML, we did find that we can upgrade our controls to using WinUI. And this, as you see here, is a look that we are providing today with the desktop XAML container. And as Jeff demoed in his uh, keynote, we created an app. We call this the XAML Gallery. We use this to make sure that um, the XAML controls can be embedded on a layout and that it could draw in our layout editor. And we've used this control to add additional controls to make sure that we can support them and add additional features to them. Some controls will have um, more available feature sets. And as we understand what our users need and want, we'll continue to add those features. But for now, uh, the set of features or abilities to access the events are a little bit more limited to the desktop XAML container. But right now, let's get on to the demo portion of the session. And oh, just before I get into the demo, I just want to make sure that we're all aware that this is also still a work in progress, pre-release software. So what I show you may not be in the finished product. All right, let's start off with a simple example. I think in the GUI world, a simple example is a button. So let's go ahead and create a button. So as, as I mentioned, this is our new IDE. It doesn't look any different, but it is built with the WinUI framework. And so a button, as I drag this out, or double click on it to drag it out, it's just gonna be a Win32 button. So that doesn't change. What you'll now get in your, uh, in your library list is a new control called the XAML container. So when you drag this out, right now, it's just a box. <laughs> It's just a box that you can add XAML controls to. So we built a list just like I mentioned with the old container. When you right click on the control, there's a contextual menu. If you're able to see this, there's a choose XAML control on the menu. And if it helps, I will I'll try and blow this up. So we got a list of maybe roughly 30 controls. Of course, this is not the complete list because you can also write XAML code that has uh, layouts, et cetera, that are not on this list. But these are the 30 or so that we've added that support some kind of event or property or methods on. So you'll see that there's some that has more support than others. But 
for now, we're going to go ahead and look at the button. So this is what a sound button looks like. If you see any differences, the big one is maybe this font size. The default font size for a Xamarin control is slightly bigger than default for a Win32 control. So that's, a, that's one difference there. If you look at the inspector, and the content property. To create that button, this is a XAML code that we added. So you notice it's a very simple kind of HTML looking uh, syntax. The name is important to add. I'll show you why later, but you should always name your controls. <coughs> and the content here specifies the label of the button. But what's great about XAML is you can add anything, really, to your content. And I'll show you how you can do that. So instead of doing that one-liner, I can also split up this code into different lines. And if I just write in button, that will be the default label of the button. But I can also embed another button. Oh yeah, case, it's case sensitive too. So if you, if you write a lowercase b button, that's going to give you a exception. But let's say I have Let's say I want another button embedded in the button. So I can create a button like this, give it a content of inner button. Okay. Click on that, and there you go. We now have a button within a button. So you can see it's, it's really easy to be able to um, create innovative UI with with XAML. Okay, so let me show you how events are implemented. So you see there, since there's a button within a button, what will happen if I click on one or click on the other? So we have this new event, and again, if you're familiar with all the container, you'll understand Every event filters up to this event we call event triggered. And this event is pretty simple. It has two parameters. One is event name. So every event will have an event name and then any number of parameters associated with it. And these parameters are stored in a dictionary. And there's a couple that are uh, available, like name, tag, and probably class. So these are the three main parameters, and other controls may fire additional parameters. Um, but for now, the button is a very simple control. The event name, if we looked at how we added the button, you'll notice that we do show what events are offered. One of the events offered is called clicked. So we'll go ahead and say if event name equals, oops, clicked, then do something. Now what if I don't care if I clicked on the outer button, because this event will fire when either button's clicked. So this is why the name is important. The parameter will hold the name. I'll show. I'll make sure the name is, I think we call the inner button, inner button. And we'll just go ahead and break at that point. So let's see how that works. And of course, I did not say and, huh? There you go. All right, here's our first example of XAML running. 
you see, I have the, you might not see the highlighting, but as I mouse over, this button's highlighted. If I click on it, nothing happens, which is good, because we didn't code any events for that. Now, when you click the inner button, this is where the event gets triggered. So here, <coughs> the event name is clicked. And we've got a couple of parameters. If we expose the content. As I mentioned, there's three that are always exposed. We've got class, which allows you to figure out what class was clicked. This might be important when you have a layout where you have a bunch of controls on your layout and you want to know, or you just want to handle one class of buttons, class of text fields, et cetera. Um, so that's one way you can use that. The name is also important because that will tell you, will identify what you clicked on. And a tag is just some special data that you can add to any XAML control. And I'll show you an example of how I'm using the tag in a calculator layout and how that's used. But this is an example of how events are handled. Let's go ahead and stop that. All right, let's take a look at some more complicated buttons. Now this is another layout of buttons. We have over here, an example of a button with an accelerator attached. So, uh, the accelerators work a little bit differently from other Win32 controls. So you'll see here that I'm attaching a keyboard accelerator. And as you'll note in XAML code, you can access some of these properties using um, the namespace as well. And for the modifier, even so it says menu, it's really the Alt key. So if I hit the Alt B, that should trigger this button's clicked event. And of course, you can actually place the, the, the accelerator can actually show as a tooltip. And in this case, it will, because this is the default. As for this button, this is also a button, but it's styled differently using just a bunch of properties that you can set on the actual XAML. In this case, I am simply setting the corner radius and setting a different color of the border, making it transparent, and just aligning it properly. Now this one's more interesting. This is a green button, and not only is it a green button, but it also kind of demonstrates how the mouse over effects work because in this styling, I am also, I'm also affecting uh, when the uh, mouse is over it by changing where the gradients are positioned and also demonstrates how it looks in dark and light mode because you have every control has a resource dictionary or theme dictionary, and this is how you style a control this way. You can also style a whole layout this way as well. But in this example, we're just styling the one button this way. And I know it looks kind of complicated, but as you learn, my, learn more about XAML and as you read about how you can change the themes and resources, this will probably come very natural to you if you know anything about CSS or HTML. And again, this one, I'm just also embedding another XAML control within a button. In this case, I am embedding a progress wheel, I believe, or progress ring, it's called. Now, these next two layouts over here, I am using a stack panel. This is a layout control. I'm going to talk about some of the other controls or other layouts that XAML offers. This one is a very basic stack panel. It provides the ability to have consistent margins between your buttons. 
and it'll lay it out for you like that. This is also another stack panel button with three buttons uh, styled differently. And as I mentioned, I create a calculator based on one layout. This is a grid layout. And there is an interesting result at the end um, from this calculation, which I'll show in just a minute. So let's go ahead and run this example. All right, as I mentioned, this top button has an acceleration associated with it. So as you saw, when you help mouse over it, the accelerator um, shows up as a tooltip, which is different from Win32 controls. But this allows you to be able to Alt-B and fire the event. And this is what a rounded button looks like. As I mentioned, the green button, I have uh, a mouse over behavior where I've swapped the gradients as I mouse over it. So look how the two gradients are swapped. So you can do a lot of different creative things by uh, affecting the theme resources of controls. And of course, I have a button down here that simply embeds a progress ring. And I'm sure everyone's in, uh, interested to know how does Flickr, is this, does this Flickr at all? Well, let's, not, let's find out. <laughs> What's your size? Looks pretty smooth. So. All right, so we have these uh, stack panel buttons here. I actually did not show you what the underlying code looks like for these buttons when you click on it, but let's go ahead and switch to dark mode. It's kind of hard to switch to dark mode. This might have high view, but here we go. So I have one of these uh, buttons set up where you can change the inherent theme for a control. So even if you're in dark mode and you don't want your button to be in dark mode, you can actually tell XAML to switch it to whatever mode you want. And in this case, all right, so we're in dark mode right now. I believe I've set button number one to switch this whole layout to light mode. So if I click on button one, that whole layout now is in light mode. And this, this feature has already kind of existed with our IDE on the Mac where you can sw swap, you can, sh you can see a layout in dark mode and light mode. So this will now allow us to do this for down controls. And I believe button two just switches back to dark mode. All right, now for the exciting result, because um, my kids are, always ask me what one plus one equals, right? And my response is, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you know it's 11, right? <laughs> okay, so that is an example of button styling. And as you noticed, this emoji, this is actually an emoji character. Um, there's a, there's a text block, or tech, yes, a text block is like a text field. Uh, this particular control supports these colored emojis, which our text area or text fields do not currently. All right, well, that layout didn't quite change. <laughs> All right, let's go back into light mode. Or is it better to see if I, I just leave it in dark mode? Dark is better? Okay. So just switch to the dark. Okay. All right, so that's button styling. I believe the next uh, thing I want to demo is 
layouts. Let's take a look at layouts. Like I mentioned, there were stack panels that we used to stack those buttons. And there are five, if I count that correctly, yes, yeah, so there's five different layouts. So we, we saw the stack panel layout with those buttons stacked like that. We kind of saw the grid layout. The calculator I showed was a grid layout. And the grid layout is it's really like an HTML uh, table. You've got row spans, column spans. You can affect those uh, the same way. And down here, we got just the, just the canvas layout, which means you can lay things out wherever, however you want. Over here is the relative panel. Just like a stack panel, it stacks your controls, but you can tell it to stack relative to whatever control is on top, to the right, to the bottom, et cetera. And then the last one uh, is what we call the variable size grid layout. So if any one of these items were bigger than others, it will automatically size and wrap according to that biggest item. And of course, again, another button um, demo, but this one now has a grid control inside the button with two different controls in there. So we've got progress ring going and a label to the side of it. And the XAML code just looks like that. So you can see you define your grid with the column definitions and how you assign each control into one of those grid columns is simply by accessing it through the namespace grid, et cetera. If I run this, I guess I'll need to run this because it just looks the same way in the layout editor, except for the progress ring now animates. All right, the next example I want to show you are the input fields. And these are all the text field, text area equivalents. So over here is just like our text area. It's called a rich edit box. It allows correct, all correct uh, spell checking. And you can also get the RTF data and set the RTF data. Down here is called the password box. And the password box is a control as named. You enter your password, it's hidden. But there's a special widget, also a peak widget on the right hand side to be able to see what you typed. And we'll demo that. This one's just a simple text box. Nothing special, and this is just our text field control. So you can see how different they look. Let's go ahead and run this. So I'm pretty much just pulling out the RTF data from this rich edit box, and I'm putting it down here into this other rich edit box, and as I type, updates as well. All right, so let's look at this password. As I mentioned, it's like a simple password field, but it has this little cool peak widget. You hold down, or click down, and it'll reveal your password. It's a nice little built-in control. And just to, just to demo that tabbing does work, you can tab through your um, XAML controls right back onto a Win30 control and vice versa and keep going. So we've got tab working as well. All right, now the next 
project I want to look at are some of the different views that XAML offers. We got the list box, we have uh, a list view, we have tree view, we have grid view, um, we have navigation view, which I'm not showing here, but I will show in a different project. But this is the four views that are pretty common, even though Microsoft doesn't really recommend you use ListBox. Even, they're even documented as not really uh, used much, and that you should use a list view, which is the control right next to it, which kind of looks like a navigation view. But that's the um, that's control they prefer you use, because ListBox doesn't actually have a scroll bar by default. You have to attach a scroll viewer to it in order to scroll it, which is probably why they don't recommend using it. All right, so let's go ahead and see how this looks at runtime. So I didn't mention that you can embed within your list box any XAML control, and that's as true for pretty much all controls. Like the button we saw, you can embed other controls onto the button. You can also add <coughs> controls into list box, into a list view, et cetera, et cetera. And here's an example of a tree view. And this button I added, it just adds an extra item to all these views. So if I click on it, there's a new item. All right, so there are, those are all the different views that Zelma offers. Now, you're probably interested in knowing what the menus look like, because all the demos that have shown you still use a Win32 menu. So let's take a look at what a XAML menu looks like. Okay, looks like it's not drawing a lighter. Okay, there we go. It's probably because uh, I'm actually expecting this to be in light mode, so I did not update the theme for this one yet. So let's go ahead and for this particular demo, let's just switch back to light mode. Go ahead and see if that updates. Okay. All right, so there's three different menus, I guess, that uh, XAML offers. They're not really menus, but the first is the main menu, the menu bar. The next is a command bar, it's kind of like a menu. There's a secondary um, dot, dot, dot that you can click to access that menu. And then down the bottom, another kind of command bar. This one's a little bit different where it's not showing the text for these icons, but as you uh, click on the secondary command, you'll see it uh, display then. So let's see how that looks. All right, so if you're, if you're truly creating a fully WinUI looking window, then you probably want to use the menu bar. You can see it looks and feels a lot better than the Windsor 2 menu. And with the menu bar, Again, you have some default icons you can attach to your menu items. And there's a list provided by Microsoft of all the different symbols that are available for you to access. Um, and here again, you can also assign a uh, shortcut key to your menu. So if I hit Control Q, this should quit the app and I'll show you a little bit later. Okay, and then this is a command bar. And this is what they call, so for command bars, there's the primary commands, which you see exposed here. And then they have what is called secondary commands, which are exposed via a pop-up menu. And down here, so I should probably zoom in a little bit. This is also another command bar, 
but it's a little bit different because when you access the secondary menu, what shows up are some labels down at the bottom of your icons. Okay. Now that I'm ready to quit, I'll just access it by Control Q. So we got all the shortcuts hooked up to the XAML menu bars and command bars. Um, That is our menu demo. All right, the next one is the tab view and web view. Now, as I mentioned before in the slide, you saw there's two additional namespaces. Um, these were added in WinUI. Um, because they did not exist in UWP. But when XAML Islands came out, it supported UWP, and um, some of the WinUI stuff wasn't available then, but they are now. So now we can access tab view and web view. And these are the more complicated controls in our example here. So for this example, I have one tab view control. So this is just the tab view control. And in, in the tab view control, I have a text box, and in the bottom, I've added a web view. And so this is a very simple example of how you can get a pretty good browser working with just one container and just a bit of code behind. And the nice thing about the tab panel, the uh, WinUI tab panel, is you got tab dragging automatically, um, tab closing, tab adding, all built in. And if I, oops, I gotta accept something. I'm just going to click on a few links to see that this is bringing up an external link. I'm just handling, just like in Real Basic, there's a new window requested event. I'm just handling that, adding a new uh, tab to this tab view. And I can now drag it over here just to move it to the first. Um, and I can close it to click, clicking on other stuff. And just like that. You can also add a new tab. And this one, I'll go to my favorite website, rojo.com. <laughs> and as you notice, I actually embedded, I have embedded a control inside a tab view tab. So you can see the, um, customizations that you can achieve with any XAML control. And this is like, this is the power of what you get with XAML. All okay. And the nice thing is this is all available with just one control, the desktop XAML container. You get all this functionality right in to just one control. Um, instead of waiting for us to add all these. Okay, um, and now for our biggest demo, which is the XAML gallery. The XAML gallery is the one project that I personally worked on to be able to make sure that all controls um, were able to be usable within our product and to play with new controls that uh, I was not familiar with and to just test things. And let me go ahead and run this to, for you to see 
what I did when I was first testing these controls. So in this XAML gallery project, so just to begin with, XAML, uh, this, this project has a navigation view. It has three stack views on the right. I just stacked all these controls in, in the stack panel. Um, but down here, I call it the playground. This is how I played with different controls. Just like in the layout editor, you can, you can write your, your content code in the properties inspector and see how that looks. I like to use this kind of playground to, to test different things. And one thing I found is that you can actually uh, use the same control but make it look different because, like I said, with XAML Islands, uh, it was originally able to host UWP controls, and later they supported WinUI. And so there are some controls that you're able to use with the UWP look and feel as opposed to the WinUI look and feel. And one such example is the, I think, the progress ring. This is a very, very simple control. You load in the playground. This is all done at runtime. But this is, this is actually the UWP look. Now, as I mentioned, there's, there's a namespace for newer controls. It's under the WinUI namespace that we added. And this is what it looks like in WinUI. So if you don't prefer that kind of look, you know, you have, you have options. You can, you can choose to use the old uh, UWP or the, the WinUI look. Same thing with, I found that I also worked with progress bar. Let me reset the value or something. So this is, this is what the progress bar looks like in WinUI. Doesn't quite look the same under UWP. It's pretty flat and yeah. <laughs> so some controls offer this, some controls do not. I found the button, there's no, you can't go back and forth. So the button is just WinUI. But it's, it's a nice, I, I like, um, Experiment, experiment with the playground. It also allows me to see what events get triggered, um, what is getting returned as a name, etc. So I use this playground a lot when I try to uh, play with different XAML controls. So speaking of playing with different XAML controls, I know we touched a bit on some of the buttons. There are a lot more buttons that you can have as well, which are the drop down, the split button. There's check boxes, of course, Rio buttons here. There's combo boxes, editable combo boxes. And there's also such thing as called the fly out. The fly out is like a popover. Whenever you click on control, you can display a flyover. And this flyover displays relatively close to wherever your control is laid out. That's a flyover. And of course, as I mentioned, you can add controls within the list box and you can handle the events within the list box as you would by looking at the name, looking at the click event. So even though you're in a list box, um, you, can, you can look for the click event and then you can handle events that way in your layout. And of course, we got the text box. We showed the password. These are the toggle switches. And you might notice um, there's some animation that goes on. It's, it's their fluent design system model. And so you get all that for free, of course. Most of the things that happen are, uh, are done asynchronously. Even some of the stuff that we do in the IDE where we have to draw 
the, um, when UI control onto layout. Fortunately, that happens asynchronously, so it might not happen instantaneously. You would have to sometimes wait for a little bit before it redraws, but, um, but it is asynchronous, so you can, your ID doesn't lock up when that happens. <laughs> All right, as I mentioned, um, custom buttons, there's a couple more. I added buttons with icons on it or pictures in it. You got the color picker, which has two different views. You got the box view, and then you got this ring view. And then you can also display more details of the color picker. And yeah, just works like that. And we talked about command bar. The content dialog, uh, it might be a little strange. Content dialog shows up within your layout, so it, it's not a new window but it's just part of your layout. But if you want to see a content dialog within your layout, this is what it looks like. And of course, you got your date time picker, calendar picker. You got your calendar view. You got your date picker. And then you also got your time picker as well. So standard stuff, got all that in XAML. Also have the flip view. Um, so the flip view is like a slideshow sort of control where you can flip through pictures and you can do that horizontally or vertically. So that's the flip view. We also support the map view. This control, again, um, you'll need a, a Bing token, map token. But it will allow you to use it without a token. It just has that big warning. <laughs> but we support adding pins. I added a state capital pin right there. So that's a pin you can add. And. Uh, That's the map control. And as we showed before, the rich edit box. We've got the scroll viewer. It's the scroll viewer. And over here, this one is an interesting one. This is a parallax view where the contents will scroll at a different speed than the background. Um, you can see the background scrolls a little bit slower. There's a lot of cool things you can do as, uh, as a developer, having access to all this, all these toys, I guess you could say, um, is a huge benefit. So we're definitely happy to offer that in the form of a desktop XAML container. All right, and then we got the view box. So the view box, there's nothing simple. You add a picture to it and you have different modes to the stretch. Yeah, so nothing too fancy there. And just some miscellaneous other controls. We got this called this hub, a hub view or hub section. Might be good for news sort of apps, um, headline apps, that sort of thing. Of course, you got the ring control have a person picture control, and you got a tree view as well, which I'm just adding to. Of course, um, I'm having, I have a auto suggest box, which is what's at the top here. And if I search for maybe view, I have code behind that uh, filters the controls and just populates the navigation view with what you search there. So simple stuff, um, all done with just one control, desktop XAML container and some code behind. And so you can see some of the functionality and the 
updated UI look and feel that you can get with just, just one control. Okay, so I believe that is the end of that demo. Go back to the slides here. All right, a quick summary. I know we looked about, I think there was about 30 controls. I think there might be more, it might be like 40. Um, as you saw, they're all fully customizable. They support uh, different styles. And even within a style, you can um, affect how it looks in dark mode or light mode. You saw different ways to lay out your UI. You got the stack panel, you got the grid. Um, other panels like relative panel and the canvas panel or canvas layout as well. As we saw with one of the demos, you can dynamically support dark and light mode. There's support for keyboard accessibility, uh, shortcut keys. Um, we all support that. And the nice thing is. Uh, the XAML, uh, XAML islands, they coexist with your existing Win32 controls, your plugins, et cetera. So you can update at your own speed, at your own pace, um, or if you want, you can update your entire UI by having just one big uh, XAML container as I showed with the XAML gallery, and that could be a full uh, sort of your, your full UI rewrite, so, so to speak. All right, so that is the end of my session. I'm sure there's lots of questions. Uh, let me look away real quick. <laughs> okay, let's start from the, uh, let's start at the front. How about you, Bob? So if I use this, it won't run on the Mac. All right, the question is, if you use this, it will not <laughs> run on the Mac. And that is correct. It will not crash, <laughs> it will just do nothing on the Mac. It's just exactly like the OLED container today. The OLED container, you drag one on to your layout, it will do nothing on Linux, it will do nothing on Mac. Yep. Tom. Uh, so to follow on from there, um, for those of us who are building, uh, using a desktop project for cross-platform, um, is there a, a long-term vision to bring each kind of controls in a way that you've got a single control so the question is, is there any long-term solution to be able to bring this kind of control to Mac and Linux? Um, depends what uh, Mac and Linux offers. That's all I can tell you. If they decide to offer something like this, um, then certainly, possibility. But at, as of now, it's, it's probably a no. So the question is, is there a way to generate XAML code from on the fly? Oh, yes, absolutely. What you saw in the XAML gallery when you searched, when I did the search, I built that whole layout, that navigation view on the fly. That was all built on the fly. And the other question was, uh, is there a way to absolutely position controls? Yes, as you saw in my button demo, um, those controls are just positioned as you drag them. So. Uh, Jeff. Thank you. 
customizing the way we're looking and showing you can do that. But eventually, just the normal way you click maps, you have to use the bar and move on. So in effect, if I drag control, and uh, it will then be able, on a Windows device, it will use one of these, but on a Mac, it will use a Mac control. Right. OK, right. that'll work. Any other questions? Is it possible to download the example? Is it possible? We'll have the examples uh, available when we um, ship R2. Okay. So we'll definitely make those available. Yes? So the question is, is the speed any different or better than we have currently. Um, I believe it's probably better. Um, I have not added thousands of controls on layout, so I can't comment at the moment to know if it's really any better. But I, from playing with it, as you saw with dragging, it's fluid. Um, so I, I believe it, it is actually better. Uh, let's go here. So as I saw, you inserted direct action XML like code in your in your IDE for, for using the control. Yeah. So the question is. No, the, the question is not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you enter you enter XML then. I saw that in your demo. Yes. If you make a mistake, when will it show up? When you leave the control or compile time? Or That's compile that's a great question. I, I failed to show that in the playground on the XAML gallery. So the question is, um, if you enter some incorrect XAML, when will that uh, error show up? Um, and to respond to that, I should have demoed how that would have worked in my XAML gallery uh, demo with the playground uh, feature where if you type in incorrect XAML, you will get a XAML exception at runtime. And do you get um, suggestions for example, like the dot and then tab, whatever? So will you get suggestions? Unfortunately, you will not get any suggestions from us about anything. <laughs> <laughs> Since it's XAML, it, yeah. Yeah, the question is, what, can, what do you know what you can use? And yes, that is really a good question because you will probably have to consult the Windows documentation. Everything that they document on XAML, you should be able to use. There are some things, I'll say, there are some things you'll come across, uh, especially with binding. Binding is something that I also did not get into, but there's binding where you can bind a control to some code behind or binding from a control to another control that doesn't quite work. There are some bindings that do work and I, I, I failed to show uh, that piece of demo, but uh, for the most part, bindings do not work. Um, there are some things that you'll find in other people's code that uh, tries to reference a event, for example, within XAML, that's not gonna work. Um, so there are pieces that you'll find out there that just will not work. Uh, let's go to Jeff. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, in your experience, you kind of alluded to this in the beginning, uh, but over the years we've had, we've just been playing around Windows, we get a lot of refresh issues and flickers and things like that. Is this thing with the new Win UI control Yeah, so the question is, uh, do we believe moving to XAML with the WinUI that we'll be free of all the flicker? Um, I believe we will. Um, obviously, there might be other issues besides flicker that happen, uh, but as, as we get into those issues, we'll figure out how to resolve them. Yeah, all right, let's go there. Normal event list? 
So the question is, if you click on one of those items, you get the normal event list. Um, as, as I as demoed, um, when you right click on the XAML container, we present the list of all the controls that are supported. Container. So the question is, maybe I failed to demo completely how to access some of the properties and methods on a control. Yeah. Yes. So maybe I assumed that you guys knew how to use the OLED container. Maybe, maybe that was a bad assumption. So with the OLED container, we have an invoke and value uh, method or property. So to access a property on a XAML control, like a button, for example, let's say I want to get the property of um, the content which is a label. What I would do in code is say XAML container dot value quote content. And then that will turn the label of the button. But if you have an event on exactly the item package, how will that work? If, so the question is if you have an event on this <coughs> item. So when you get the event triggered, uh, event, then that is your XAML control, right? Yes, but he did. He did. Uh, sorry, um, he did make a good point that I did not demo again. There, there's so much to demo. I, I just completely forgot some of these details, but. Let's say you do have a button within a button, and how do you change the caption of the inner button? Um, we've designed it such a way that you can fully qualify the value. So for example, um, my outer button's called outer button, my inner button's called inner button, and I want to change the content of the inner button. So I would say XAML container dot value quote inner button dot content equals, yeah. Yeah, it, it gets messy for sure when you have <laughs> content. Yeah, it, it does get messy, but we thought about that and I, I, forget, I um, forgot to show you some of the code, unfortunately, but um, it was a very good question, so that's how that works. Oh, oh sorry, I'm out of time, but uh, thank you for attending my session. <laughs>